tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh, I'm sorry. Did somebody give me an excuse to play a Bon Jovi song <laughs> from 1986? Well, I guess I have to. Welcome to Marvel TV Weekly. I'm Christian Black at Christian DMZ. And as always, joined by those watching on YouTube, to my left, you are right. Carrie Lane, where can people find you? Yes, hey, how's it going? You can find me online at, uh, I'm all, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Carrie D. Lane, K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I was just thinking, it was like, I was thinking of his username, so and then the, Lane, yeah. and I was like, wait, nope. You're not There's the, no, the. no, I just... Uh, well, yeah. the Michael Shirley is next to her, and where can people But I'm Michael? not the Michael Shirley. But you are I'm, the I'm, only one. Yeah. I'm Michael X Shirley. There and if I know. was the only one, I would just be Michael Shirley. Oh, but you there is Michael another X Michael Shirley. Shirley. He's, like, lives in sense. Chicago, and he's, a, like, an art director, and he's, like, really talented, so I can't, like, hate. There was another <laughs> Carrie Lane, so that's why I had to put my middle initial in there, so... Well, since we're having this conversation, there, <laughs> there was a Danish boxer named Christian Blatt. He was undefeated through his first 20 hmm. fights. Then he got knocked out and I think he stopped fighting. But that's uh, my name claim to fame. But we're joined in studio by a uh, special guest, Ryan Sands, who is at the Ryan Sands, which the led Ryan to all the confusion. Sands. And uh, Ryan plays Alex Wilder's dad, Jeffrey Wilder on Runaways, which uh, we're uh, four episodes in, the fifth episode, just a few hours after uh, tonight's show, people will be able to watch it on Hulu. So uh, Ryan, thank you for joining us here on Marvel TV Weekly. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, uh, I guess the first thing before we dive into Runaways is just sort of, your bio says that you grew up a fan of Marvel Comics, so who were some of your favorite characters, and if you had to isolate one, who do you think has had the best representation on either TV or movies, you know, translated from the comics? Hmm, well, I, uh, my favorite character has always been Spider-Man, um, as a kid, yeah, it was just like... Spider-Man and his amazing friends on yeah. Saturday mornings. I was Which watching was, it that. was not a great show, but I, I watched it every week. I Man, loved it. Yeah. It is I could like play that today <laughs> and just the sound effects, the voice <laughs> actors, you know, the the music cues, it's just like an instant time machine. Yeah, um, Carrie's a big, big I'm a Spider Man fan. Huge, so I was like, yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he was definitely my, my gateway drug. It was actually, it was that <laughs> show. It was yeah. Spider Man's Amazing Friends. And I know exactly what you're talking about the sound effects. It was like when Iceman would turn into a block of exactly. ice. It was like a very specific sound. Where have you heard that sound other <laughs> uh, than that? Right? Only on Spider Man. Yes, yeah. yes. And that show was so popular that uh, Firestar was actually not a real Marvel Universe character. Oh my God! Here's the theme song. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> this is this is what the whole show is going to be. Yeah. Now. Uh, and uh, yeah, they actually introduced uh, Firestar in uh, Uncanny X Men number 193. Numbers stick in my head. I like to show out. The 90s sometimes. one was a really good. Did you like that? The 90s, 90s Spider-Man? Oh version? yeah. That one was really good. No, that was that was actually a good show with good stories. But this was like, <laughs> I like fun this when you were better than the 90s one. I have really? a couple of them on VHS. Nice. You know how I am with the. VHS. I do know how you are with the VHS. Yeah. I used to wonder, like, what was all of that equipment I for? I know. Yeah. And then, you know, Aunt May comes in with the vacuum, and it's like, whoops! Right, right. Yeah, so... I really liked how his room did that, like, headquarters flip thing. Yeah. Oh, man. No, exactly. So, you know, we should do a whole episode of Spider-Man and Missing Friends, but we will not do Just it. Just not the swarm episode. Just, yeah. Uh, there's a great episode of this. If anybody wants to really just watch one Spider-Man and his amazing friends, it's called Seven Little Superheroes because Captain America's mm -hmm. in it, uh, Doctor Strange is in it. Uh, I forget who all the superheroes are, but uh, one of them is, is uh, spoiler alert, is, uh, is Firestar's dog, Ms. Lion. Ms. Lion. He's one of the big uh, superheroes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, are, were you disappointed that there wasn't a Spider-Man and his amazing friends movie where we got to see Firestar and Iceman and Peter Parker all living together? Well, never say never. Yeah, that's true. You know, I know, never right? Say never. Yeah. Sure. Well, except Fox would have rights to uh, Iceman and Firestar, so I think I just What's, ruined can that we dream. Just can we just have the dream? I hear like Fox is Disney and Fox and Marvel. Well, no, I don't think. I, yeah, some people don't know that that's a, a good thing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, Spider-Man is sort of a very uh, easily relatable character. Uh, you know, as a kid, I also liked Batman, but I certainly never related to Bruce Wayne. You know, he's just a yeah. bored millionaire decides to go out at night uh, dressed like a bat. Um, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, so, but I, I think I'd also read in your bio that you and your friends actually made your own comics when you were kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so what, yeah. Uh, how were those different from the, the sort of regular comics that were out there? Well, you know, it was really like, um, 
uh, was one of my classmates, and we would just uh, you know talk about cartoons that we saw, the comics we were reading. We would, we would trade comics a lot, and we would make up our own characters, and then we would just go home for the weekend. And uh, you know there were there were many comics, you know yeah. maybe you know five to ten pages or so, mm -hmm. and then we'd exchange them Monday. <laughs> and uh, awesome. yeah, it was just you know, I was just a little nerdy kid. <laughs> yeah, I well, love that. I I can relate. I I also would make really bad comic books. I'm not saying that yours were. Mine were, and I never showed them to anybody. But yeah. I felt like, oh, look, look what I'm doing. Didn't I'm make comic books. books. I made comic strips, like in the school newspaper. So you got published? Yeah. I didn't nice. show off, you know. Nice. <laughs> uh, so you could have you could have been you could have been, you could have created the next Garfield if you I know only, I yeah. could have, right? They're all on Facebook, so you know. Yeah. Now uh, Ryan, your character on Runaways, uh, to me, uh, I think that all the parents on Runaways are very unlikable. But I would say that to me, Jeffrey's the least unlikable, if if that's a very backhanded compliment. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, I I think it's hard to like any of the parents, uh, but uh, I think you see some of the best parenting between uh, Jeffrey and Alex. You know, there, there's like, oh yeah, I'm part of this, you know, secret group that does some pretty terrible things, but you know, I still care about my kid. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about the balance between, you know, playing this sort of multifaceted comic book character that also happens to be, you know, iconic for a lot of people who read yeah. the Runaways comics. Well, um, first of all, it's, it's a challenge and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun challenge to to play Jeffrey. Um, I didn't expect that. I thought when you read that first volume, like within a few pages, Jeffrey's stabbing <laughs> a girl. You know, it's just like I was expecting to to play this this big, intimidating bad guy that that didn't give a second thought to killing someone. You know, and and being honest i was like i was looking forward to that challenge because i've never had that opportunity to play um someone whose whose moral code was so different than mine you know so as an actor i was looking forward to that challenge and then to see how our writers have interpreted jeffrey wilder for this um world it was like oh wow he's like a regular guy in a lot of respects where at the forefront of, of his his mind are um, is is the well being of his family and his community and um, distancing himself from a very um, from you know from a, a rough a, a turbulent past where he wasn't the the best guy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to to play this character who is like still doing some some crazy stuff <laughs> but having um you know feelings about that he he knows that um they've been at it for a while when we see the pride they've been at it for um for years and uh where we find them now if something goes wrong like all of that would have been for nothing so the stakes are incredibly high right now um on on the show and uh, so it's just a lot of fun playing a character that that d finds no joy in doing this stuff but realizes he has to yeah the interesting thing is you know and obviously we're only up to episode four of runaways at this point but uh, the different members of the pride seem to have different levels of commitment to it. it it's you know a number of them are reluctantly still there like i would say that's the case for jeffrey and dale and his wife it's like well you know we're, we're trying to get out and right. get away uh but you know the people who are into it they're really into it and i think yeah. it's kind of the interesting juxtaposition between those who are you know, who don't care if they, you know, stab somebody or, you know, <laughs> hit someone with a tire iron <laughs> in Skid Row, you know. So uh, I think uh, it's interesting. And I kind of, I really like the way that the, you know, the scene, I think it was in the first episode, the scene in the kitchen at your character's house, mm -hmm. um, the, <laughs> nothing really epitomized how much they dislike each other as much as the scene with Jeffrey and Dale, uh, played by Kevin Weissman, who, he, you know, he drops in a couple of my brothers, and you're just like, no. Nah, man. <laughs> yeah. nah. Which I just oh, always man. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a live chat going in. Uh, Midnight, Midnight Black says, the parents are definitely shady, but I agree that Jeffrey seems to have a heart. Yeah, which I think, it, <laughs> for those listening on iTunes, he, he touched his heart. But So so thank you, Midnight Black. Uh, yeah, and anybody who is uh, joining us live in the chat, uh, please uh, send your questions or comments uh, there. Um, but uh, I think that 
it, it is interesting. It, I guess it makes it more interesting to have these characters have heart, and there's still a couple that seem to be a lot more right. cold and, and merciless. So I think if everybody was that way, uh, it might be you know it might be a little bit less engaging. But I think I think it works however you tell the story. But uh, uh, I don't know um, if, if if you say you as Ryan Sands ended up you know crossing paths with the Pride, who would you least want to be left alone mm. with? Because I feel like it's not Jeffrey. It's Tina. <laughs> yeah, it's, it has to be Tina. Tina Minoru. <laughs> yeah, Tina's scary. Tina's yeah. scary. Um, I think your wife's pretty scary. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's just... Uh, Catherine, uh, she's a sweetheart, you know. <laughs> and, uh, Catherine, um, played wonderfully by uh, Angel Parker, um, is, uh, you know, she's she's got that tough exterior, but what, what I really enjoy and, and what you'll see what the what the viewers will see um is that they're both leaders and they're both very strong but it's um in different ways mm -hmm. and they allow themselves they allow each other room to to lead in those ways and they really hold each other accountable for it um and so that that's a that's a really cool dynamic but yeah she she's not scary just <laughs> you just got to watch out for Tina though mm -hmm. you know <laughs> And Brittany is, is such a, a sweetheart, but uh, <laughs> which is, is so funny. But yeah, we uh, we give each other a hard time. Yeah, that must be it. Must be sort of an interesting uh, you know switch between you know when the the cameras are, are rolling and you know just hanging out on set is that especially when you're dealing with a group of essentially supervillains for lack of a better term yeah. that uh, they have to be not just a little different. Everybody's different than yeah. the character, but they're just like yeah, they're probably the nicest people behind the scenes, but yeah. Uh, yeah. not. We not the way that we get to know them. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a, a really great cast and it's 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 fun because it's so it, we got a huge cast. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 16, 17 of us at um you know, in those on those big days where like the whole pride are together or um, when it's the runaways and the pride together on set. It's it's such a, a really it's a luxury that everybody really gets along the way they do and we can generally have um genuinely have fun with each other while we're you know on set forever do you guys know or are you able to tell if you know what other shows you might be on like the same timeline or oh like universe? it's sort of a shared universe with yeah. the runaways and other because we shows. know like like the gifted for example is mm -hmm. not in the same timeline or it's sort of like it's an offshoot of yeah it's not even the same universe as legion which is another x -Men right. show. Mm -hmm. yeah but we know like you know agents of shield that's the same time frame as the marvel movies do you know if your show is in that movie time frame or if, if it's we hear basically what everybody else hears and that is all connected yeah we don't okay. know exactly how it's connected um but uh but yeah it's that's that's all we we got right now We've been expecting a Marvel timeline to kind of put that into. Oh yeah, that mm -hmm. we've we've been promised it, yeah. so that we can see where yeah. it all is. But so. I, I guess uh, you know the nobody from the Runaways or any of the Netflix Marvel shows were in the Infinity War trailer. So there's a little bit of a disappointment there because I want to see all the TV characters, even if it's just for one second. Like, look, there they are in the movie. <laughs> you know? Marvel News. Someone made a trailer of all the animated cartoons and replaced the Infinity War trailer with I did the same that. audio, I but it's that. all oh, the. Yeah. Yeah. Cartoons. Yeah. So funny. Uh, it's on YouTube. Go look that up. Isn't isn't everything on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> um, we're back. on YouTube. Oh my god, That's we're on YouTube we right now. <laughs> so people should chat with us. Um, getting back to Jeffrey for a minute, uh, I'm wondering sort of how you think of the character. Like before you started, you know, like first day on set, in your mind, was he a bad guy or somebody who just kind of got caught up in a few things that were out of his control? Oh, he was a yeah, he was a bad guy. Okay. That that is what I took to uh, my audition, you know, that, that he was a bad guy. And that's what I probably took to the um, first day of shooting. But um, the more I, I talked to our writers and, and um, just, you know, started to ask some very specific questions as to who this guy was, it just became more intriguing. Like, you know, the, the I believe and uh, the strongest emotion is love, okay? I was given some um, advice as a, from an acting coach um, years and years ago to always find the love in the scene. Let love determine where you're, you're going, whether it's 
your love for the person you're talking to, whether it's your love for the person that this person is threatening, you know, it's, it's always goes back to love. And so for that's kind of how I, I've approached Jeffrey, um, with his love for his family and, um, and especially for his, his son as, you know, they become, um, estranged, I guess, as, as that, that wedge starts to come between them. Um, so that's always at the forefront of Jeffrey's mind. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, that's, that's how I approach him. Right. And you can see sort of the closeness between some of the different uh, families, you know, as to which ones are having trouble grasping the concept. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, Chase has absolutely no problems. Like, oh, no, my dad's a terrible person. Absolutely. I have no problem believing it. Yeah. But uh, Alex in particular uh, and uh, Carolina, you know, just like, no, they couldn't possibly be. But uh, so I, I think it, it is interesting that not not everybody gets along with their parents. Not everybody hates their parents. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the mix and match. And uh, obviously in, in sort of the uh, visual sense, it's a great mix too because it's such, and this was of course going back to the comic books, but such an ethnically diverse cast of characters, which it's crazy to think about it. It's still a fairly uh, newer idea for comic mm -hmm. books. You know, uh, my wife's Chinese and she and her sister loved Jubilee on the X-Men cartoon because she was like the only Asian superhero. Right. I mean, still kind of, you know, so, uh, you know, so you'd, li you'd like to think that, you know, this generation of sort of younger comic book fans or super powered fans, you know, maybe they're like, you know, a, a young Asian kid would be like, oh, I like Nico and yeah. Yeah, I can identify with that. I can identify with Alex, you know, all that. And uh, I think that it's something that they're obviously much more uh, conscious of now. And, uh, you know, which is great because, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, that Black Panther trailer looks pretty amazing. So, you know, it's like just spend a little time and uh, really make people care about these characters, you know? I mean, uh, people love the Luke Cage show, you know, on Netflix. So, uh, and I these got mistaken for Luke Cage in England. Oh, did you? I did. And I, did I, had, to, I had to laugh because I, I, I had the... Uh, I had a hoodie on that day too. So I just laughed. <laughs> I'm not with a bullet hole in this. Not so much. No, <laughs> no, no. I was I was working on another show um, and uh, uh, for Netflix at the time, and uh, uh, someone asked me, caught the accent, like, "Oh, yeah, where are you from?" And um, I said, "Yeah, I'm from the states. I'm here working on a show." And I'm like, "What what show?" And uh, so, well, you, it's a new show. You haven't heard of it. And uh, what network? I told him it was it was Netflix. <laughs> and um, so the next time I went to the show. And I see this woman kind of, you know, looking at me that works there, and she's just kind of checking me out. I'm like, okay, all right. And finally, as I'm about to leave, she comes up and she's like, "Luke Cage." I'm like, no, I'm not Luke Cage, but like I get Jeffrey it. Wilder. I get it. Yeah, right. Actress, yeah, little, little did I know, right at the time, I was going to be Jeffrey yeah. Wilder. Someone in the chat did kind of point that out. Zaya said that um, there's some similarities in what be, this. Yeah, I guess between you, uh, you and Mike <laughs> Coulter. Yeah. Funny. yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, and then adding to diversity, uh, Midnight Black says that that was something that drew them to the show, Runaways, mm -hmm. was the diversity, plus that they aren't stereotypes. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it, there are some great, you know, like Luke Cage is a perfect example. If you read Luke Cage number one, yikes. I mean, it, it was written in sort of the mid-70s and uh, just... I mean, it's, that it's, outfit is yikes. Uh, that outfit is awesome, but uh, one with the butterfly collar and, and, and the little you know? and the little headband, yeah. which I loved in the in the show when they yeah, had him stealing somebody's around, laundry. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. Uh, but no, I mean you know, and and you know, Black Mariah, and just uh, you know, I think that it's probably well intentioned. Like, oh, we're gonna have you know this this uh, African American superhero. We're gonna have Luke Cage. But uh, I don't know, I guess just the time it was written in, it's immediately apparent that it was a different time. So now you get these characters that, uh, you know, I, I think that are just a lot more relatable. Uh, I think it's an, it's it's important. I mean, I'm, I'm a kid who, like, you give me a pencil and paper as a kid, a bowl of cereal, like, I'm good. You know, I'll yeah. just sit there and draw all day <laughs> long. And um, there really was a time as a little kid that I... I there was a moment where I'm drawing and I'm like, wait a minute, none of these characters look like me. None of them. And, and that is when um, an older cousin uh, introduced me to Luke Cage and Black Panther. And they like quickly became two of my, my favorite characters um, um, back then. But it just, it made me feel proud it made me like my, my chest, you know, I could like stick my chest out a little bit because 
I saw heroes that I could like really identify with. And it's at the at the heart of this thing. We're all talking about characters that that stand up for, you know, the people who you, they fight for the people who can't fight for themselves. They stand up for the right thing. Um, that's what this whole superhero thing is like that. That's the roots of this thing. And 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 um, these are were people that that we we wore their we wore their their emblems yeah. on our chest like <laughs> underoos. Come on, you know, and and. <laughs> watched their cartoons and they gave us life lessons. So why wouldn't, why shouldn't um, we be able to see characters that represent all of us? Um, so it's it's really a, a fun um, dynamic as uh, from, from, I have a, a couple of comics that I colored the characters brown in them. Oh wow. Like really, I have it framed in my office and it's not lost on me that I'm going to, to set to play the the father of Alex Wilder, you know yeah. this 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 kid with with great hair that I'm jealous of. <laughs> I think um, we're all jealous. Yeah, of Renzi, Alex's I'm, hair. I'm just look at him like, man, I wish I could do that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's it's like really cool that that we're at a time now where we're all being represented, and it's it's exciting. Yeah, no, definitely, I I agree with that. And uh, Zia says the show does a great job showing diversity, uh, unlike its peers. Uh, well, you know, you don't have to slam everything. You know, <laughs> there. Th you know, I I know Michael's not the biggest fan of the gifted, but at least they they uh, gifted have. Gifted is okay on their diversity. Well, not amazing, but you okay. know, the 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 first Native American superhero, mm -hmm. uh, Thunderbird, is Thunderbird. represented in yeah. some yeah. version there. Yeah, which I mean that that new X Men from Giant Size X Men in I think nineteen seventy four. All of a sudden, you had you know you had Storm and you had uh, we had Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler and you Colossus. had Colossus who was Russian which was still, you know, unheard of at that point. And just the idea that it was this multi, multi-ethnic, multinational uh, right. group of superheroes, it, instead of, up until that point, it was all mostly not just white, it was just everybody was from New York. I mean, well, that's <laughs> the way it should yeah. be, because, I mean, when we were talking about, like, mutants, you know, and people that are different, you know, than every person that's walking down the street next to them, you know... And you're talking about these people have powers and stuff, and you know you're trying to find some inclusivity there. So it doesn't surprise me, you know, that our culture is going that way. I mean, I started reading comics probably like 1993, 94. So when I was getting into it, you know, I saw everything, and so you know, it all just seemed normal to me. I didn't really grow up with prejudice or anything because I'm seeing, you know, in like these comic books I'm reading, you know, how that is. And you know, like you said, when you look back and you look at you know, like the 70s and the 60s, it really is just like a white man's world. Oh, yeah. No, and I think that, uh, you know, it was just a frame of reference from who the creators were. And I think, right. obviously, we've we've seen that change so much. Uh, you know, you referenced powers, and it reminded me that one of the things that we've been saying that we like a lot about Runaways is kind of the slow rollout on the kids' powers. You know, mm -hmm. there wasn't like... You know, I, I feel almost like if this were a show for a broadcast network in the first episode, everybody's powers probably in the first 20 minutes, you know, because they really, you know, they got to keep people viewed. Mm -hmm. So being on Hulu or, you know, any of these streaming services, but this show's on Hulu, I think you're able to kind of take a little bit more deliberate, not disinteresting, but a, just a deliberate pace. And like, mm -hmm. we're going to tell the story the, the way it needs to be told. Although I will say, and I said this on the show, I was really glad that the first three episodes were all at once because that, that first episode, I was like, well, I want to watch another one. And I only know because Carrie told me, well, there's three of them there, <laughs> so you can watch two more. Um, so, uh, you know, that must, uh, talk a little bit about playing that as uh, as an actor. You know, I heard an interview with John Bernthal, who plays the Punisher mm -hmm. on Netflix as the Punisher, and he looked at that season one as like, well, we did a 13 hour movie, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, is, it, is it a lot different than approaching this if it were for, you know, a broadcast network where it's not only on every week, but sometimes, you know, it goes away for three weeks, it comes back, and then it's gone, you know. So to be able to tell it in this fashion, do you feel like the approach was different? I do. I, and I, I think that is one of the luxuries of, of being on Hulu. Um, being able to essentially um, build our own Hulu vibe there, you know, um, and take our time with with some of the uh, with the with the storytelling, um, you know, I I I could sound biased here, but like really, I I enjoy 
uh, suspense, suspenseful stories. You know, I um, I like having to kind of you know figure some things out. I don't like just being spoon fed everything um, in a show, um, or in a, in a story in a, in a movie. Um, so I I think that that's a cool part about the way that that our show is written and, and the way our show is paced, um, because you know when when the the new script would would re be released to us like it's funny you, you'd see all of us in the in the the back you know like on our phones and, and sitting in our chairs like okay yeah 108 is available and we're all like kind of you know looking trying to see what's what's going on <laughs> right. because the suspense just keeps building and um, I think we've we've been really fortunate to have some some great writers and and our our showrunners I mean uh, Josh and Stephanie have a, a great track record and. Um, uh, that is really, um, you know, one of the, the fun and, and kind of cool things about our show and what, what makes us a little different. Yeah, I think it's a, it is an interesting way that, you know, because of their background with the, the OC in particular, it's just like, okay, well, we're going to just add, you know, sort of a superpower element into mm -hmm. that. Were you going to read Smoking yes, Panda's so, comment? Uh, yes, new go question. ahead. We got another question from the chat. This is from Smoking Panda. Hey, um, Smoking so Panda. it's pretty safe to say that the runways is quite a hit, at least for us. Um, I mean, the viewers, but did you have any doubts or any idea as to how successful it would be? You know what? I didn't really think about it. I really didn't. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, and I'm, I think that's my personality in general. You know, it's like, I don't really get too mm -hmm. amped up about anything until it like gets there. But, um, I think because I'm, I would be excited it just in general, you know, I, I, I had to temper that and just say, okay, look, let's just focus on it one day at a time because I'm like, I'm, even though I'm probably a little older than the demographic uh, for this show might, might um, appear to be still like, this is something I would watch, you know? So, I mean, I, I would, I would tune in every week. So I just had to kind of just, all right, look, this is work and we'll see how it goes. I, f I think it's good. Um, I know the the comic was a hit, you know. The comic was was um, and still popular to this day. So I'm I just you know just kind of had to just just focus on the work and be pleasantly surprised when it's received as well as it has been. Uh, Ryan, I'll start with you, and then I'll actually ask uh, Carrie and Michael what they think. So if somebody's finding the Runaways for the first time as the TV show, mm -hmm. do you think? it's better to just watch the show and watch the story unfold? Or can you understand sort of that idea of like, well, now I'm going to read all the comics between, you know, episode four and next week when episode, or I guess episode five, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I have a week, so I'm mm -hmm. going to just read everything until then. Do you think it's, it's more fun to let it unfold in terms of the TV show or, uh, uh, would you uh, f recommend just reading everything? No, I'd recommend just, just watching the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd recommend just it. watching the show. Um, the cool thing about this show is that the spirit of those books are there. So even if you did go back and read the books, I, I don't think it would like, you wouldn't be spoiled at every right. turn, um, which is like just fun for me as a fan because I don't, I don't, I don't like something that is like beat for beat the same as what it's a, adapted from. I mean, there's no room to be surprised. Right, there's that, that there's that Gus Van Sant psycho that was uh, shot for yeah, shot. Like, yeah. well, why why make that psycho? Yeah. You know, just you do something different. You know, yeah, if you're yeah. gonna remake something. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I don't I don't begrudge any artist um, if that's where you know the creativity took him. Hey, go yeah. for it. But in terms of what I enjoy, like I like seeing how the uh, uh, a comic book um, costume translates to you know to the the quote unquote real world um, application of it or or how powers translate um, or even how origins are, are updated for 2017 and beyond that maybe were were um, you know created in in 1971 you know right. so I I like seeing how things are are updated and and tweaked um, it makes for a fun watch for me. But um, man, the Brian K. Vaughn, I mean, he killed it <laughs> with the uh, with the with the book. So, uh, hey, if if uh, if you've got the got the the means, go for it. I think you'll it's it's a great read. You'll enjoy it. But I don't think you have to. Uh, and, and he's uh, also a consultant on the show, right? So mm -hmm. I think that helps to make sure that it captures the spirit because yeah. I think. 
that especially the current crop of of comic book based movies and TV shows, especially the Marvel Netflix shows, do a really good job of making sure that they're true to the spirit. I mean, we can all think back to shows that really didn't pay that much attention to, you know, how how faithful you mentioned the, was. the costumes. That's yeah. always the big thing for me. Like, yeah. I I know we. I'm never usually satisfied. Like, I want them to look exactly <laughs> like they looked in the you comics. You must hate the X-Bandex. Yeah, yeah, you must hate well, the X-Men movies because they just wear you, leather. But you like when they make the I joke, didn't... at least? He's like, well, do you want to yeah, wear yeah, yellow yeah, spandex? Yeah. So. I, yeah, I was super let yeah, down no, during the X-Men movie. <laughs> I'm not, like, wearing this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to see, like, this stuff. And they kind of do that in The Flash. And, and mm -hmm. the, I, uh, I hate to say DC Comics. You can talk about DC Comics. But, like, they're, I think they're really good in that show about... Uh, keeping the costume or those mm -hmm. shows about keeping the costumes sure. look really similar, but uh, make the maybe like the fabrics, the textures, well, like, like adding these little things. Mar uh, and Netflix I, Daredevil is like yeah, yeah, yeah. Realistic. And I, I've been saying I love how the Runaways they all look. They look just yeah, exactly. I, yeah. So I finally feel like I've gotten that for Marvel. I mean, we're kind of getting that in the movies a little mm -hmm. bit, but yeah. finally yeah, this on is a the, TV I think, show. I think, I think you like said this a couple weeks ago. This it. is the first one that you're actually happy that like yes, it looks yeah, the way I want. Yeah, they all <laughs> yeah. like don't even get me started on the gifting casting. <laughs> look, I'm like, I like. I was not gonna all of these people. I was, you play her. You I play was her. not gonna talk about the gift, right? I know. Well, we just point. watched it. Can we like? <laughs> no, can we like no. talk about it for? Like, I mean, I can't believe I'm well, saying this. Can we talk about this for at least a minute? Well, <laughs> we have a we have a guest. We don't need to talk about. Uh, no, we'll, in, in the final minute, we'll uh, we'll talk about something. But I wanted yeah, to final get, minute, that's get your saying. thoughts though about so if you're watching the Runaways and haven't read the comics first. Would you just be like, I just need to read everything. I can't wait another week for another you episode. You know me, I need to know it Yeah, that's kind, of why, that's kind of what everything. made me think the, to ask the question. I, like, read the Wikipedia page, then I go <laughs> and then I find all the variant covers and find what's my favorite, and then I buy those, and then I go and find, you know, the ones that I'm just fine with the regular wow. cover and fill in the collection with that, then I start reading them. No, I, I have to know everything. I need to know how everything's different. I need to be watching so I can expect, like, what's going to happen. No, like, I need to know. I already know what's going to happen to everyone. <laughs> so you're that person. It's just like, oh, you, but you should have read the book. Yeah, I got all kinds of things I want to talk to him about, but I can't because, I mean, we're here it, on the... Because it, it, it hasn't Spoiler happened stuff. on the show yeah, yet. Yeah, it's stuff you guys uh, would be so mad. Be like, no, don't tell me yet. Uh, uh, Carrie, are you um, enjoying just watching it? or uh, do, I are like you... keeping pace if I... Uh, read and watch like when Handmaid's Tale came out I reread it okay and kind it's of our go-to show also, also Hulu well, that's another way. Hulu yeah. show but that was one where it was a book to a show yeah. and it was easy to read but then there were similarities so I mm -hmm. agree I do like it when they change it up a little bit it's kind of uh, best example I like is when they do a cover of a song mm -hmm. unless it sounds exactly the same you're like mm, so it needs to sound different mm -hmm. enough so when mm -hmm. a show changes things up enough you go hey new things but it still has the spirit right. of it so uh, for Runaways yeah I would I I read it quite some time ago. I haven't been. I didn't go back, but maybe later I'll be like I'll probably finish the show and then read that, it. That's actually where I am because I I read a little bit, you know, quite some time ago. I uh, don't remember nearly enough, and I'm just like, great, I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm gonna watch the show. I think after one season, then I'm like, well, let me go, let me go read a little bit more. But maybe uh, waiting for the next season. That's <laughs> right, exactly. Like, okay, exactly. That's what I'm like. Yeah, yeah I don't want to. <laughs> I've got a question. So. I know you know a lot about comic books, and but you and I know you're like partial to the cast. But if I give you had nothing to do with the cast, mm -hmm. who's your favorite runaway, like of the of the team? Would you really say Alex? You know, I, I like uh, the character. Well, yeah, I could I could answer that because um, I read like the whole volume. When, when I got the audition notice mm -hmm. and when it was the untitled Marvel project and then I'm like <laughs> right. reading the, the breakdown, I'm like, wait a minute, that's, that's Runaways. <laughs> um, um, the character that I probably enjoyed the most out of the Runaways was uh, Molly. Okay. Yeah, I thought mm -hmm. Molly was fun. She and... has a different name in the comic book that she has yeah. in the show. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, Molly, think uh, Wim Hayes Hernandez is Hernandez. like, uh, yeah, do you think that's intentional because I wouldn't think they would oh, yeah. just leave. I don't think things yeah. like that happen accidentally. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's, but yeah. Uh, you know that, and I think that's the the great thing is that the the youngest 
character is the one that has the powers first and everybody's like just shut up nobody wants to hear you talk about you know not realizing like oh you know this could be useful that one of you is super strong yeah. you know, when she gets scared the youngest the smallest yeah. and the strongest <laughs> exactly. okay everybody. so you, you did say which one's your favorite but which one of their powers because we know some of them and mm -hmm. we'll know some later which powers would you want <sighs> okay well, i want to talk to a dinosaur i want to have a telepathic <laughs> link with a dinosaur <laughs> Probably say no. I think I Carolina's think, pretty awesome. Yeah, I think I think that's Molly. Really? Though. Yeah, I think well, Molly because I could you can kind of just do stuff, you know, subtly just you know push a car. <laughs> out of, out of a space like, I don't know what happened. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you made me realize, Michael, that yeah, for me personally, probably Carolina because it reminds me of Dazzler, one of my favorite right, X Men characters. Right. Um, so uh, what was I gonna ask? Oh, I got all distracted in my notes. <laughs> Same. Um, oh, okay. So uh, what I what I was just sort of wondering, we were talking about some of the other Marvel shows before we started, uh, and that's why I couldn't find it in my notes because I didn't write it down. Uh, but uh, so, what are some of the other shows that you're uh, at least keeping semi current with right now? The other Marvel TV shows, uh, which ones are you enjoying the most? You think? Um, Obviously, well, I'm current with Agents of Shield. Mm -hmm. Just watched the uh, the first episode of the new season uh, just today. Um, uh, Punisher, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really digging that. Um, I think it's great. It, yeah. It's 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 so different than any of the other ones, and it's the first time. I'm sorry, Michael. It's the first time I feel like that they captured the character well. He loves the movie from 2003, but uh, you know what's what's funny about 2004. that? 2004. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's embarrassing. <laughs> when I heard that that uh, John Bernthal uh, was cast, like for a split second, for a split second, like nerd Ryan was like, yeah, but you know, Punisher is like huge like he's mm -hmm. like a tank but then like wait a minute john bernthal though that's insane i mean yeah <laughs> and, and in fact he's from dc you know it's, it's a dc love right there too but um yeah he um uh, washington dc that is um yeah I, yeah I not thought, to be confused with DC. Right, 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 exactly <laughs> um but i thought that uh like that was perfect you know i'm like wow he's such a you know the intensity uh, that that he brought, um, you know, my introduction to him was um, on The Walking Dead, sure. and just the intensity and and the you know the little unhinged quality that he brought to Shane, I thought would be perfect. And um, yeah, season two of, of Daredevil, his his introduction didn't disappoint, as far as I'm concerned. That's Frank Castle. Yeah, and I, I've talked about that on this show that that scene with Frank and Daredevil in the cemetery, season two of Daredevil, like that's that's like just great. Yeah cinema and it, i know it's television i know it's a comic book but i was like no this was that was great that was some of the best acting i saw uh, in the last uh, few years it was uh it was great and i love the way that they've uh, carried that on uh for the show uh now i know michael wants to talk a little bit about uh, agents of shield because it came back because mostly because he wants to chastise me because <laughs> i didn't watch the premiere and i didn't catch up on the 14 you episodes you don't even have a watch. good reason either. no but except uh, that yeah you? yeah well uh the fact is that uh my wife gave birth to her daughter on wednesday Yay! uh 21 days early uh little little lucy blatt and uh she was, thank you and, that uh, reminds me oh no wait you really know what, you know i but, always have something but, in my bag but this was my week where i was like last week i was like okay well i because i stopped watching after ghost rider oh my gosh <laughs> for little lucy. you got lucy nice. a rocket nice. oh my gosh Aww. that's yeah, adorable it's rocket raccoon it says three and up but i call bullshit on that. <laughs> well so, my son's two yeah, so something go. tells me he's gonna well thank you very much you're very well uh but anyway last week was my week where i was gonna catch up on shield and uh, there were a little bit too many diapers, but uh, I'll get there. I like the show a lot. It's not like I fell behind because I dislike it. It was just all of a sudden I knew that Ghost Rider wasn't going to be on anymore and I was less excited. But I know you told me he comes back, so I need to catch up. But just a general sense, did you? what did you think of the premiere? I'll ask you first, Michael, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premiere. Uh, for those like, of if you were expecting anything like at all, like throw that out the window. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really feel like this is giving it away because you find it out like the first like minute, like okay. it's all in space, right? Yeah, so yeah, I think the commercial show, like, yeah. pretty sure that's in the yeah, commercial. uh, you know, and you know, they're kind of like, well, are we in the framework <laughs> or is this real, you know? So uh, I guess we're all assuming that it is real, that it's not the framework, even though they are like referencing the framework and the framework has made it all the way to the future. And it's, um, there are some people that still have their hands on that technology. And mm. we find out um, 
why everyone's in space <laughs> and what happened to Earth and who happened to Earth. Wow. And All right. Okay. I am interested to see. I'm I'm interested in about who happened to Earth. Okay. Like, that's what well, I'm they, interested well, in. People in the chat let us know. Oh, yeah, Zia says the S.H.I.E.L.D. premiere was amazing. Yeah. By the way, the uh, uh, the After Buzz uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after show is on Sundays. So if anybody wants to check out that, check that out from last night. Um, I wanted to ask Ryan, sort of that show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., is really the only network Marvel show that, mm -hmm. you know, 22 episodes a year, that sort of old model. Um, how do you think that, I guess it sort of works against it just a little bit. I mean, I think it's, I do think it's a great show, but they have to kind of churn out so much more than, you know, like Legion was eight episodes and the Netflix shows are 13. You know, mm -hmm. you can really just, you know, and, and I believe Runaways is 10 episodes, right? right? So yeah, you're able to tell a very specific story and you don't have to really spin your wheels for maybe episodes 14 through 17, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael's making a face because you know him. I right. know the problem you have with it even if you don't know what that problem is. Well, I asked I asked Ryan a question, well, so know, you can tell me what my problem is. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, can you, can you <laughs> give me the... You ruined it for you. You did ruin everything. Yeah. Um, what do you think uh, that... Do you think it works against Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that it's okay. on a network okay. and that they have to do 22 episodes? Um, to be honest, no. I don't... I, I, I see how it could be a problem, but I think that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they've managed to to keep me entertained and, and going along for the ride. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan, but I'm also... I'm a lover of storytelling and film and, you know, good writing. So, you know, I, I will like that will trump the fandom at times for certain yeah. things. I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm going to bail and I'll maybe come back and it's not keeping my interest. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that hasn't been hasn't been the case. Um, I like the the kind of uh, they, they still manage to, to, to roll some things out kind of, you know, slowly and save some things for for later. Um, that's the a big whole, problem, I think. For really? You, right? Is it, it is well, too slow? It's a little. It's a little slow, mm -hmm. and and you know I had to get so over the fact. So you're saying with like the net, um, the streaming services, they streamline it a bit more. A, a like, little bit because they have, it. yeah, they have yeah. less. They don't have less fluff episodes. episodes. And I had to get over the fact that Mockingbird wasn't married to Hawkeye. Like that, it took yeah. a, it took a little yeah. getting used yeah. to. Um, you know, we're gonna run out of time, and I wanted to ask Ryan, and he's at the Ryan Sands on both Twitter and Instagram. On Instagram, I saw something that I wanted to give you a chance to talk a little bit more about. Uh, what is this project you're involved with called uh, When Autumn Leaves? Oh, wow. When Autumn Leaves. Um, when Autumn Leaves is a film project that um, I've been working on for, for some years now. Um, it is, um, you know, I'm referenced before, I'm from Washington, D.C., and I really, like, there's a part of town in D.C., the U Street Corridor, that is, it's very... Um, has a very rich history, especially with the African American community. It's where Ben's Chili Bowl is. Come on, I'm mistaken, dude. Yeah. I'm I'm so hurt, and I, I just came back from DC. Oh, and I couldn't make it. I tried my hardest to get to the airport now. Yeah, but I, I not, wanted to go. Nah, I had to I go to U Street. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I really wanted to set a film there um, because the the basically, you know, the world hasn't really been exposed to the beauty of of what U Street is. You know, it's just a uh, an amazing melting pot. Everybody's welcome. It's great music, great art, great food. And I wanted to, to tell a love story set in that place, which would also be a love letter to my city. And just through the years, career, you know, the director gets a, gets a job somewhere. I'm leaving the country. And, and so now, finally, um, we're at a point where we're, we're really confident about um, shooting it in, in the city in the fall of next year. So, yeah, it's a romantic drama. Um, all about uh, DC, so it's really exciting. It's interesting because very rarely, if something's set in Washington DC, it's it's going to be like a Jack Ryan House story, of cards, yeah, House of Cards, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's going to be political or espionage or something like that. Yeah, and it's a it's a beautiful area that I've spent a lot of time with uh, with family and friends there. So I, I hope that uh, you do get the chance to make it uh, Thank next you. fall. Um, well, we are actually out of time, so I'm sorry, Michael. We're not going to talk about the gifted. You're going to have to wait till next week. <laughs> I hang around, man. We can talk about it after. <laughs> Uh, but uh, thanks so much to Ryan Sands for joining us. As I said, yes, he's at you. the Ryan Sands. And uh, Runaways 
is Tuesdays on Hulu. So we uh, we just miss it for this show. We're always like a, almost a week behind. We're six full days behind. But uh, we if we stay up until midnight, we can watch uh, episode five. And uh, so make sure that you uh, catch it there. Thanks again to Ryan. Uh, for myself, I'm Christian Blatt. You can find me at Christian DMZ. And you guys can find me online at Carrie Deline, K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. And you can find me at Michael X Shirley on Instagram and Twitter. All right. Thanks again to uh, to Ryan Sands. And as the great Stan Lee would say, Excelsior! From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.